Hi everyone, welcome to another Tiny Seeds and today we're going to talk about the hot mess that our unfair fighting gets us into. And our, our problem is we don't actually even know what is unfair fighting because this is just the normal way we behave and the people around us. So because we don't know what healthy, um, I don't want to use the word fighting, but let's use that word. So healthy fighting means we get a resolution and nobody feels unclean when you walk away. You know that feeling that you get where you feel like, I actually feel contaminated by just what just came out of my mouth. Never mind all the hurt that I feel that has been inflicted on me. Just what came out of my mouth makes me feel like I need to go take a shower. I don't feel empowered. I don't feel like there's a resolution. And I don't feel like I actually managed to get somewhere. And that's the normal fight. So when we have a difference of opinion and we use fair fighting, then it's not actually a fight anymore. It is just a way to get a resolution. So I hope you. this is something that you would like, and I hope that this resonates with you so that you can sit here and make notes and listen again and start applying this in your life. So let's start. How do we know that there is unfair fighting going on? And I don't want you to look at the other person. Now I want you to look at yourself. Once you've looked at yourself, you're going to recognize a pattern of unfair fighting in other people, and you'll be able to start doing it differently and ask for better and and um, actually start improving it. But improve it from your side. You don't have to improve the other person to improve a relationship. You can just start by improving it from your side because you're the only person you have that you can actually control and direct somewhere. So first hint, there's a massive reaction immediately. So there's a reaction, it is immediately, and we know there's a reaction. No matter what your reaction is, whether it is pulling back or going into fight mode or going into defensive mode, it's a massive reaction inside us. We are the one having the reaction and it's coming out some sort of way. It will, we are going to vomit it over whoever is in front of us. Now, that massive reaction it's an instant thing that your brain haven't had time to even actually process what just happened and come up with a, a really adult empowering response, which is your job to do, by the way. But what it has done is it's gone into fight or flight or freeze mode. It's always one of the three, fight or flight or freeze mode. And we can jump up and down between all of them. But normally when we have a reaction, it's going to depend on the trigger that you have. So some of us have got a trigger <clears throat> when somebody blames us, we're going to go into freeze. And some of us has a trigger that if somebody blames us, we're going to get into fight. And some of us, when somebody blames us, we're going to go into flight mode. So none of these things you can control which button is going to do what until you become aware, I have this button, this kind of thing causes me to react in this kind of way. Now, that's an amazing thing because you can control it so that you don't have these unfair fights anymore. Because why, why are we having fights? We're having fights because there's something we don't like. There's something we want to change. And if we do it and in an unfair way, we don't have the result and then we are back and then it's a hamster wheel fight that doesn't get resolved we don't get anywhere with it and we don't actually get the result that we so deeply desire so we're going to have that fight again and it's going to be ugly and we're going to not feel clean when we're done with it. so having a big reaction is notice that you are having a big reaction and then learn from your side not to have a big reaction. Buy yourself some time. Say, I want to have a big re reaction. Learn to regulate your emotions. You're not supposed to have big, re big reactions and you don't have a right to vomit your own story over everybody. Now, if you have fight or flight or freeze reactions, these have nothing to do with the other person. It's all about you. This is your amygdala, your subconscious that has an Im immediate reaction to an unresolved hurt. This is why you've got to work with your hurts and find somebody who's going to help you and find ways to get through it. The easiest way to do it is get my book, Hamster Wheel Relationships. Where did I put it? 
because you either go and get counseling and help let somebody help you oh, it's very dark you see there so or because you can't do all of this for yourself you can't see your blind spots and you you think you're just entitled to these reactions because somebody else did something wrong and but those questions in there are the right questions they're going to make you pay attention to yourself which is what you're supposed to do so you're supposed to learn as an adult how to regulate yourself so you don't go vomit all your your feelings because your feelings are going to come out like this you're going to be mean you're going to say stuff that's personal you're going to attack you're going to defend you're going to withdraw you're going to blame somebody you're going to guilt somebody you're going to shame somebody you're going to judge somebody somebody and you are going to say mean things you are going to really contaminate the relationship with the mean things that comes out of your mouth sooner or later and not resolve anything so that's number one big reactions unfair fighting nobody can resolve a fight if it's only even one person having big unfair reactions you can't resolve it if there are two people having big unfair reactions you are both utterly in powerlessness and you cannot move forward and this relationship will go away sooner or later because it's not based on adult ways to solve problems we all have to solve problems we can't just arrive in a relationship with another human being and there's not going to be problems of course there's going to be problems and life is full of problems so we have to get the adult skill of solving problems that is why we are supposed to have fights like i say once you know how to do it they are not fights anymore they are a way of getting a resolution all right so let me see what did i put on next okay now the second thing which is unfair fighting is when you have wishful thinking but you didn't actually ask you think that something should be another way people should know people should know what you want but they should just know it because but, but that's unfair fighting you if you have not actually asked for ask for something if you have not actually worked through a problem with somebody if you have not stated your needs or what doesn't work for you the other person is not supposed to mind read you're coming from two different places this visceral chicken is coming from that nest with those kind of eggs and the other little chicken is coming from another kind of nest with those kind of parents and everybody has their own experiences and whatever they inherited from from their families for generations and generations and their own dna and their own makeup and own family traditions and ways in which our parents behave my mother used to do that it's natural for me my father used to do that it's natural for me and then we merge and we have to learn ask 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 be your own adult ask unfair fighting is wishful thinking it's the stuff you think must resolve themselves automatically because you just wish think they should you should somebody else it should be like that you get resentful and be really um bad bad communication <laughs> lack of communication happens after getting resentful it's that's when stuff really gets worse right what's number three number three okay so we are not specific it's a huge unfair fighting effort it's like you neighbor you always nobody can respond to it especially if you're on a roll and you start and it's this and it's that and this from 20 years ago and this one and that one and this and this and this and this there's not even time for anybody to respond and if i try and respond then it's yes but yes but yes but so there is not one specific problem the problem of today that's the hint which problem do you want to solve the one that happened today not the one that happened last week two weeks ago two months ago that time is over gone you missed your chance you have a problem today that is triggering you stop being triggered look at it and say what is my real problem here oh you just talk to me in a really harsh tone i mean it's like darling do you notice how you're speaking to me can we do something about that i, I really don't like it if you speak to me like that how did i speak to you rewind in your head go back two minutes ago listen how you spoke to me ah i don't like that can you please stop that that is way more way more effective than dirty fighting unfair fighting you never speak to me in a nice way you never give me attention that is unfair fighting it, 
Okay, the next one is unwilling to be wrong. So we have, again, one of those absolutely unresolved hurt traumas in our life. Uh, outlooks, belief systems, I can't be wrong. If I'm wrong, I'm, it's, I'm going to be punished. If I'm wrong, I'm going to be judged. So we don't learn that it's okay to be wrong. We don't know, nobody normalized for us. Everybody makes mistakes. It is normal. So we have to normalize it for ourselves. We have to be very willing to say, I was wrong. Let me do, let me have a do over. I was wrong. Let me, tell me how I can make it better. I was wrong. I'm not talking about let me be the carpet and walk over me and I'm always going to be wrong. But we are all wrong from time to time. And if we don't say, wow, I didn't know I was doing that. Thank you. Or um, I hate that I was behaving like that and you were feeling like that. I really want to make it better. Or please tell me next time if you catch me and I'm talking to you in a harsh tone because I don't want to do that. You are important to me. So many ways in which we can just say I'm sorry and not take responsibility for everything in the whole world and always feel that we are to blame. But actually, when we are wrong, realize we're not going to die. Our hands are not going to fall off. We can say I'm sorry. Sorry doesn't kill anybody. It makes the other person feel hurt, validated and important. And if you are in a relationship that you want to fix and you don't want to do that for the other person, let them feel hurt, validated and important to you. Then what are you doing in that relationship? And I'm talking about all kinds of relationships, whether it's friends or family or love, our, our intimate relationships. It is important that we do this for each other. That's how we get it back. Don't sit and wait for the other person. Don't go into victimhood, which is the next one. So a lot of things make us go into victimhood. We we are don't understand we are our own, our own adults. We don't understand the power of our voice and our choice. We don't understand that we are supposed to have our own batteries. And then we go around blaming everybody else. And when something happens, it triggers us again. That big response is going to be the victimhood. And we are going to vomit our victimhood over everyone. And we are going to guilt them and shame them and blame them. We're so sorry for ourselves. And we are going to feel the worst of anybody else because Going into victimhood and vomiting it over other people is the most disempowering thing we can do for ourselves. We are not the victim of anybody else. We are adults. We get to choose. We don't have a right to, to blame people for our situation. We are the ones who make choices every single day. And if we don't make a choice, we make a choice not to make a choice. It's up to us to step out of victimhood and to take back our adult powers a voice and a choice and to use it right next one an inability to listen so if you are having a fight and you refuse to listen to the other one it's usually not even you won't know that you're refusing to listen to the other one because you will be so wanting to be right that you are actually not listening so i say it's unfair not to want to listen to the other one we don't know we do that we just want to be right and because we want to be right, we will not listen to that one. And it's not about, I need to be right. It's because I don't want to be wrong. Because I don't want to be wrong, I need to be right. I hope this makes sense. And that is an internal injury, another big, act, big, big unresolved trauma inside us that we're going to just vomit out on everybody else. Until you learn in fair fighting, you learn to listen to that one. You don't have to like what they say. You don't have to agree with them. It's not fair until you stay quiet long enough so that you can hear what the other one says. You don't do that, unfair fighting. Right, so this, I think, is a, a longer seat than normal. And I've talked very fast <laughs> to get a whole lot of information in there. So I'm going to suggest that you listen again and make notes and that you... Oh, there was one more. I need to add one more. Discounting the positive. So discounting the positive is not recognizing what's good already, not thanking somebody for what they're contributing, but looking for the wrong 
and only commenting on the wrong all the time. And in your head, because you do that, if you do that, in your head, you don't understand that you are out of balance by looking at the negative. If you start looking for the positive and you start commenting on the positive and appreciating it, you are able to have way more fair fighting going on. And you can say, yes, I recognize that you do that and amazing and well done. And thank you for making that effort. Now, I don't want to just keep on raising a bar anymore, but I just want to go back to my original point. Please just talk nicely to me. Please just check your, your tone. Thank you for all the other things you do. I recognize it. Thank you so much. I understand your love language is bringing me coffee and bread. And so I really appreciate that. Thank you. But none of that is really going to make a change to me while you're talking to me in this harsh tone. So that is, you can still say, this doesn't bother me. But this bothers me. This doesn't work for me. But you, but it is just so much more fair. It is so much better for ourselves when we stop discounting the positive. Okay, that's me really done now. There's my notes out of the way. And um, Muffin, you can see, is sleeping very nicely, but I'm going to throw it off now because I'm done. And I'm going to ask you to leave comments, share. I'm coming back always to come and look at it. And um, see, uh, and YouTube still sends me not notifications very fast. And Facebook sends me notifications two days later. <laughs> so you can you can put them on. You can you can um, hashtag me or at at Louise. And um, I'm going to come in. And I'm going to respond. Send me a message. I'm approachable. I'd like to hear what you have to say and please share this. You know some people who doesn't fight fear. You know, we know many people, most people don't fight fear. So please share this, recommend this to your friends. If you, see, if you know there's a couple in, in, in difficulty, send this to them. This is such a powerful place to start. Sometimes we don't see it in ourselves, but maybe this was, will be something that will make a change for somebody. So thank you so much for watching and i know lots of you come in you watch the next day or next week whenever you have time I really so appreciate your time and thank you for commenting and for giving the hearts i i love the hearts you know us and um till next time i'm going to send you lots of love you find my video and from me muffin and me till next week lots of love See you soon.